Hello again, rail fans. Hope you all are doing okay uh, this new year. Um, I have spent a lot of the last summer and fall at busy spots on the railroad, hot spots, places where there's a lot of trains going through, but not very many places where there are multiple railroads. Now, there's a few places in Florida that fit that description with multiple railroads. Uh, Crawford, north of Jacksonville, that's about the best that there is in the state with the NS and the CSX crossing right there. A um, lot of traffic there, but it's not the friendliest place to light down. Uh, it's kind of in the wilderness, it's kind of closed in, and uh, it's hard to shoot there without really trespassing. Um, down in Jacksonville, Beaver Street Tower, you have the same kind of thing, CSX, NS, and the FEC there. Not the nicest of neighborhoods, and really, again, no really easy place to light down and uh, shoot trains. I think there's a, there's a couple of spots on the commuter lines around Orlando and Miami, but really that's about it in Florida for multiple railroad hotspots. Uh, for that, you really have to drive about two hours north of the Florida-Georgia line on I-75. Now there you'll find a spot that is a lot more hospitable it's got a lot of traffic on both railroads, actually three railroads, um, a tiny short line that runs through. And uh, I recently spent uh, a little over two days there. So let's take a look. This is southwest Georgia in the middle of peanut, pecan, cotton, lumber, and watermelon country. We are at Ross Siding on the CSX Fitzgerald Sub, and at the moment, we've got a hot rail. That's vernacular for a train coming. Pounding down from the north is daily hotshot intermodal Q025. This guy originates loaded at Bedford Park intermodal ramp at Chicago and runs straight to Jacksonville, Florida's Duval ramp. O25 is rolling downhill and curving off to the left. The track makes this turn to line up for crossing two other railroads just ahead in downtown Cordell. Q025 is one of nearly 40 trains through here each day, and that makes Cordell, Georgia, a bona fide rail fan hotspot. A small city, Cordell is where agribusiness is conducted for farms across South Central Georgia. Peanuts, cotton, pecans, lumber, and watermelon are the main products here. Cordell is home to companies that process them and ship them out. It was also one of more than 2,500 towns with a Carnegie Library, built and funded by U.S. steel tycoon Andrew Carnegie. Just like a thousand other places, the interstate highway just outside the city limits sucked much of the retail life out of downtown Cordell. But the trains are still here. This is Q606, northbound out of New Orleans to Waycross, Georgia. He's running southbound on the Fitzgerald sub, but he's a northbound train. I'll explain why that is later. Right here is what makes Cordell a hotspot. Coming from the left is the CSX Fitzgerald Main. 
Coming from the right is the Heart of Georgia XSAL line. These both cross the Norfolk Southern's GSNF District Main and its Cordial siding. This intersection is why Cordial's Downtown Development Authority followed the lead of other towns in Georgia, Manchester, Folkestone, and Locust Grove, and built a train watcher viewing platform. Rail fan tourism is a growing industry, and Cordial folks weren't about to let their own valuable resource go undeveloped. The city was already a stakeholder in a tourist train that's popular across the South. We'll take an inside look at that next. Al Willis lives in the town of Vienna, nine miles north of Cordell, where for six more weeks he'll serve as the county's magistrate. This morning, though, he's serving as volunteer train master of the Sam Shortline Tourist Road. As the sun comes up here at Georgia Veterans State Park, where the train ties up, Al is performing a walking inspection of his train. Okay, basically just checking the cars out, making sure that, you know, all the cables are there, it's the communication cables on the other side. Just make sure none of that is, you know, dragging and make sure that everything's hooked up. Anything that's out of the, out of the ordinary. That includes an interior check of the train's impressive consist. Antique passenger cars, including the Deering, Wisconsin, and the road's own car, the Americas. So this is our uh, Americas car, kind of the first class. Uh, tables, chairs, families can sit and fault and they, they give them a the The Genesee and Wyoming engine on the south end is here because they operate the freight business on the heart of Georgia Line and provide power for the Sam Short Line train. This is the salon on the car, Wisconsin. It and the Deering, I mentioned earlier, are on loan from private owners. Since Amtrak discontinued hauling private cars on its trains, owners have searched for places to park these expensive antiques. Okay. Running these two on the Sam Short Line is a win-win for car owners and the tourist line. Railroad consultant Paul Knutson is aboard with his family this morning. In addition to doing some work for the Sam, he's an avid private car fan and never misses a chance to ride one. At 8 a.m., we're all aboard and rolling the eight miles eastward to Cordeal, where the train will open for business. It's the Cordeal Railfan Festival this Saturday, and even though numbers are restricted by COVID, Ticket sales for the train are expected to be pretty good. This is a nice ride through woodlands, farms, and orchards, at one point passing over a cove on Lake Blackshear. The Sam Short Line runs from Cordell to Georgia Veterans State Park, and then to Americus and Plains, the hometown of President Jimmy Carter. There's lots to see and do on this well-orchestrated tourist railroad. APP marker. This signal, which is always yellow, tells us to be prepared to stop at the next signal ahead, which protects the diamonds at Cordell. The old city water tower signals we are arriving at Cordell and the crossing of three railroads. First, the Norfolk Southern. And then the CSX. Founded in 1888 at the intersection of two railroads, the Georgia Southern in Florida and the Savannah, Americus, and Montgomery, SAM for short. The GSNF later became part of the Southern. The SA&M was bought by the Seaboard Airline, and a third line would then make its way through here in 1902. The Waycross Airline came in from the southeast out of Waycross, Douglas, and Fitzgerald. With a top management change and a new name, it left Cordell as the Atlantic and Birmingham, headed northward for Vienna, Manchester, Atlanta, and Birmingham. Troubled times over the next few years brought in new owners and new names, including the A, B, and A, A, B, and C, and then Atlantic Coastline. This is now CSX's former A, B, and C mainline from Birmingham and Atlanta down to Waycross, Georgia. 
By the way, that town nine miles north of Cordell, you've probably seen it out there on the interstate signs uh, as you pass back and forth on I-75. But it's pronounced Vienna. Now, if you call it uh, Vienna to any of the locals around there, they will know you are not from Georgia. So just make sure you call it Vienna when you get to town. Now, we'll get back to the business of rail fanning Cordell in just a second. Rolling around the curve on his approach to Cordell Railroad Crossing is Q647, daily Chicago to Waycross mixed freight. The train watching platform isn't yet complete, but plenty of fans have gathered up here anyway. The DPU engine is about mid-train. Remote controlled distributed power has enabled the super trains we're seeing these days, some as long as 15,000 feet. I've gotten a lot of questions about DPU and discovered I didn't know very much about it, so I'm working on a video on what it is and why it's so beneficial. The cars keep coming on this monster train. At 25 miles an hour, it took him 8 minutes and 51 seconds to cross the diamond. You smart people can do the math on that and find his length. The show rolls on 8 minutes later as A730 pulls up and across the diamond. A730 is the Cordell local. He's pulling in cars for interchange to the heart of Georgia. The hog for short. That is noted Georgia railroader and rail fan Tommy Thornhill in the foreground, grabbing shots in this good light. A730 is dropping his cars on the 1,300-foot interchange connection track between the two railroads. The hog will then pick them up and at some point bring them to its five-track yard east of town. CSX doesn't really have a big yard in Cordell, just a few side and storage tracks. The day after Christmas I was back at Cordell, the first stop was Ross Siding again. Coming out of the diamond in Cordell is Q601, daily manifest out of Waycross to Gentilly Yard in New Orleans. The reason for an odd-numbered train to be running northward happened after CSX sold off the Tallahassee line from Baldwin to Pensacola. These New Orleans trains used to run that way, and from Waycross to Baldwin to New Orleans is southbound on the railroad. The job is still southbound, but he's now got to come northward out of Waycross to Fitzgerald, Cordell, Manchester, and LaGrange, where he then turns south on the A&WP to Mobile and New Orleans. That's why Q601 and 602 and 605 and 606 all run backwards on the Fitzgerald and Lineville subs. I was packing the gear up when the bells on the crossing gate started ringing. 
I looked up and saw another train coming northward, two SD40-3s leading an empty hopper train, what I used to call a Silent Sam, and never heard him over the radio. So, no ID and no idea on this one. Here at North End Ross is one of CSX's core deal customers, Helena Industries, makers of fertilizer and other agrochemicals, a supplier to the huge farming business here in Georgia. I said earlier that CSX has no yard at Cordeal, but that's not exactly right. Here at Ross, they have two tracks that break out of the siding. With lights for night switching, you've got a yard. Right now, that second track is occupied with maintenance of way equipment. That's for the winter tie replacement that CSX is doing in this territory. When I moved back around the corner to the diamond, another southbound came in the picture. At 1600, here was G361. In the lead is CSX 7002, a CM44 AC, rebuilt from a 1990s era AC44 CW, but it still has that Dash 8 and Dash 9 era horn. Love it. This is 670 axles and 9,800 feet of grain loads for Waycross and then Valdosta, Georgia. There were some other rail fans out here today. That's Jose up from Sesums, Georgia, outside Waycross. At 1630, Norfolk Southern stepped up with southbound 125. He was already past the signal north of town when we heard him, so we had to stay on the dark side of the tracks. is daily manifest traffic out of Kansas City to Simpson Yard, Jacksonville. The Norfolk Southern's defect detectors at Cordeal don't announce axles or length, so I'm not sure how big he was, but he was a big one. A connection track links the Norfolk Southern with the CSX here for interchange traffic, but right now CSX has it tied up with on-track maintenance of way equipment. They're storing these machines in almost every track they have around here that's not a main or a siding. 1756 and we were in that last bit of light between sunset and dark that the pilots call civil twilight. The clear signal at Cordial holdout is for QO26. Hotshot Intermodal, from Duval Ramp back to Bedford Park in Chicago.
This was the last of the available light for today. Plus, the temperature was dropping under this crystal clear sky. 27 degrees forecast for tonight, and that's a little chilly for this Florida native. But I'd be bundled up and back out here early tomorrow for the non-stop action that was to come. Zero seven oh eight, crack of dawn in Cordell, Georgia. The northward absolute signal on the Norfolk southern side is showing a high green. NS282 out of Simpson Yard, Jacksonville, is heading north in the first light. Bound for Lander's Yard in Chicago, he'll stop along the way and work Austell, Georgia and Cincinnati, Ohio. Two eighty two is container traffic on the head and auto racks on the bottom. Have you ever noticed those white lights on the sides of crossing signals? Those are little windows into the light housing designed to shine down the track. This lets the train crew know that as they approach, the crossing lights are working. Over on the CSX side, engine 6532 is warming up on this 27 degree Sunday morning. This will be local A730. As mentioned earlier, CSX is parking track equipment anywhere it'll fit around here at night and on this holiday weekend. This is a house track running up behind the crew office. Just beyond the 5th Street overpass, the north end of Cordell siding opens up and the A730 crew is dialing up the JD dispatcher for a job briefing. Cordell, uh, like say we come out downtown and go to the side and at Cordell, do a little bit of switching there. Alright, what's your engine number over? Go we'll have a 6532, 6532. Bullock's oh, number over. Yeah, 03094, 03094. All right, coming out, light engine going to Cordell siding and enough fuel there. That's right, I got plenty of fuel, I got fuel yesterday. All righty then, okay, to open up, occupy the main between the holdout and north end of Cordell. Signal indication to the side there, Cordell over. Listen closely to this horn. At first, I thought it was another train out there somewhere. But then I realized it was just the echo of this one. It's really impressive what you can hear when you combine a few flat walled buildings and the Sunday morning quiet of a small Georgia town. This morning we're switching cars in the side track just east of downtown. I'm calling it a side track because that's different from a passing siding. A side track is a track adjacent to the main for purposes other than meeting or passing trains. At 2700 feet this seems too long for a storage track, so I'm calling it a side track. The objective here this morning is to pull all these cars out of the side track bring some to the hog and some others up to Ross. Plus, switch the tank and the tee box at the top of the cut to the bottom of the cut. To accomplish this, the crew will pull everything out of the side track and then back it onto Cordial Siding. That's the track in the middle. I'm out clear, shoving on. Shoving on about 10 of them. Room 15. Two lined up, need about 10. He'll then pull forward until the two cars clear the switch. Good, pulling on and over the switch, about three. Yeah, clear. Reverse the switch and back those two cars into the side track. I got you lined the new track, I'm clear, shoving on in here, about five of them, drop a couple. Three more now, three. Two more. That'd be a good time you stop that three step. Now he cuts them off and pulls back out onto the siding, where he then backs onto the rest of the cut and pulls it all forward past the switch. 
Now he backs all of that down into the side track to couple up to the tank and the T-box car, and voila, they're on the bottom. Rolling 20 feet. Stretch, I'm in the clear. Okay. Yeah, give it that three step. You got three. Three step protection, and we'll lace up the air brake hoses. I release them with three clear, pulling on it about four. We'll get them outside, get a little brake test. Now let's pull it all back out. With the two cars, we're at the head, now at the bottom. We'll pull up the coupler pin to make sure it's open, because we're apparently going to back on to something else when we get downtown. One last check of the switch position, and we're out of here. PSX Jade, Badger Jet, Selection over. A730, Miss Me. Uh, see what are switching here in the side and like to see if we can come out, shove the hog, and then go over raw. So. All right. Signal indication. I'll show everything lining a lot back at Cordell side, and it'll be clear when you leave. You need a light over the diamond over? Ah, uh, yeah. We're probably going to have to have one. Yeah, we'll need a light to get over. Okay. All right. I'll get you fixed up over. All right. We appreciate it. 730. You're welcome. Be a sex city dispatch check. Approach medium at the Cordial holdout. Heading down in about four. All right, four in four. Good, need eight to clear the switch, get what you need. Knock that signal on, down, get it right. Now the final shove into the hog connection track. Yeah, looking good, up to 10, one, zero. Six bumps. While he was making this shove, I sashayed around to the Elbert Road crossing at Ross, that same dirt road crossing where we began. When I got there, a southbound piggyback train was coming out of Vienna and down the hill. F30 got approach medium, Cordial Diamond. Q125, double stack loads out of Memphis, Tennessee, headed for South Overyard in Savannah. He's on the brakes because of that approach signal he got at the north end. He may have to stop because the south end switch is now lined against him. A730 has come across the diamond and is entering Ross siding at that south end switch. The size of Ross allows the dispatcher to cut it close. With only four cars, A730 will have plenty of time to get in and in the clear. And it's a good thing, Ross is 13,705 feet. That's more than three and a half miles, but it's not enough for today's Q125. Q125, about 15,000 foot, we ain't gonna clear, we just gonna ease on around the south end. Even though A730 is well clear of the south switch, Q125 must keep his train ready to stop until he can see that south end signal. He's still running on that approach indication he got at the north end, but it's only another minute till the good news comes. Q125, 26, clear. That south signal went green, so 125 can now giddy up and go. A730 slides into the tiny yard here at Ross and begins to put those cars away. I figured I'd head back down to the Diamond, and it's a good thing. The action at Cordial wasn't yet over. Get 125,
Since the RailFest weekend in November, the Cordial Railway Park has been pretty well completed. Parking lot paved, landscaping in, and these historic markers installed along the roadway, telling the story of Cordial and the railroads here. At 1226, NS's own 125 shows up. One twenty-five is carrying mostly loaded auto racks, likely traffic for the FEC. The JD dispatcher is letting the railroads take turns at Cordial this midday. Up next is CSX train L025. This is Q025, but running out of his normal time slot, probably because of the Christmas holiday. Like just about every other big train today, LO25 is running with distributed power mid-train. And right after him, another CSX southbound. It's Q541. Q541-25, click signal, quarter in and locking on. The locomotive 3228, foul out. Q500s are manifests, mostly Midwestern trains. 541 is out of Queens Gate Yard in Cincinnati, Ohio. He works Georgia stops at Chatsworth, Cartersville, Fairburn, and Union City before terminating in Waycross. He said farewell to Cordial because there was still one shot I wanted before heading home. 30 minutes southeast of Cordial is Rebecca, Georgia. At 19,550 feet, this is the biggest siding on the Waycross to Birmingham line that isn't designated double track main. First is a northbound hopper train stopped in the road crossing. In six minutes, here comes Q541.
Tribeca is a popular photo spot because of those big feed silos. It's just a nice shot. Now, if you do visit Cordille, make sure you carve out some time to take a ride on the Sam Shortline Railroad. They got a lot of stuff going on there. I think you can get on in Cordille at uh, Georgia Veterans State Park. Uh, they carry you out to uh, Americas and Plains, Jimmy Carter's home. You can stop at each of those locations and get off and explore the towns. Really nice. Uh, it's a really nice ride uh, for, a, for a tourist railroad, uh, so I highly recommend it. You can check them out at samshortline.com. Now, a lot of you have uh, written me uh, about the bell notification problem on YouTube, uh, not being notified when I put up a new video. Some others wrote to me and said the way to fix that is to unsubscribe from the channel and then resubscribe to Distance Signal and hit that bell button and that supposedly uh, fixes the problem. So give that a try. Don't forget to put your comments in the comments section down below. I read them all. Um, hit the like button if you like this video. Email me if you'd like at railfandanny at gmail.com. I read all of those and try to respond to almost all of them, as many as I can anyway. So until we meet up again next time somewhere out there on the high iron, this is Danny Harmon, out.